Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Sevtech Ages. So since last episode, I did not get this area done like I was planning on. I spent pretty much all the time over on this tower section, and plotting things out, planning things out, and whatnot. I'm trying to get to a point where I can actually start working on... I will say the roof over there is going to be a little bit different, um, because this tower is not going... I'll, I'll explain it in just a second, but... Um, I did spend a bit of time working on this little breezeway area and connecting that path over. It's not 100% done, uh, but we do have it looking a bit nicer than it did last episode when it was just a pathway <laughs> that crossed over there. And I did change over the illumination wand. I'm doing silver lights um, over here because they're going to blend in a little bit better. And I've actually got some ideas for adding the greenery. It doesn't look like there's any space for greenery, but I have some really cool ideas, I think. I think it'll be fun. So, there will be some greenery tied to this breezeway. But anyways, if we head on over, um, I did start adding this section here. Um, it's not totally done, but it's going to come up to about right here. Then it's going to go in, because I actually need some areas over here that are open to the sky for the setups that we're going to do. So, the roof is actually, there's going to be a smaller tower that kind of runs around the center there. It's just going to be supported up through the middle. And then, I'm going to have supports that cross over from this over to the center and kind of hold that tower up, if that makes sense. <laughs> and so the roof is going to be drastically smaller than um, this big section here. So it's going to be kind of a, I don't know, it'll be about half the size. And it'll probably span this. Basically, I need to make sure that these outer blocks here are not um, covered, because they're going to need to be able to see the sun. Technically, all the rest of this can be covered, though I will say these little sections here probably aren't going to be covered because the multi-block that we're going to be putting in there is actually fairly large. So I've been plotting that out and I built this little underbelly so it's going to be easier to kind of run wiring and stuff around up underneath this because we are going to have some uh, item pipes or fluid pipes I mean that kind of run underneath the floor a little bit on this tower. Um, but this is going to be the future site of our power generation and um, a lot of our liquid processing related stuff. So what we've got here, I'll go ahead and explain what each of these are, and of course we're not... It'll make more sense once we get into the power setup and the liquid processing setup, but this is going to be a very <laughs> large setup. A lot of multi-blocks going into this. Um, so right up here, or right up, we'll start over here. Um, these sections here that are the 4x4, four four, these are going to be distillation towers. And I've actually got one here, I've got one there, I've got one there, and I've got one right there. So we're going to have four distillation towers I don't really need that many. Honestly, two would be plenty. But I'm going to go ahead and set up two because it'll look better, um, honestly. So, <laughs> those things are a little bit expensive. We talked about those last, what, last episode? And then next to them, we have these little 3x3 three three structures. These are going to be distillers for distilling water. You don't necessarily have to distill water to create steam, but we're going to distill it because why not? Plus, it's just more multi-blocks we can stick in here <laughs> for the sake of it. Um just for fun kind of a thing and then right here we're going to have our um solar tower thing what's that called um i can never remember what it's called but uh it's immersive tech yeah solar tower i did have it right so we're gonna have solar towers um with the whatever they're called the uh uh solar reflectors <laughs> we're gonna have four of those around each solar tower so we're gonna have the solar towers setting here back here and back over there so we're gonna have three of those which is probably overkill but that's fine we're going big so plus i need something big to fit into this tower because i mean it's massive it's a big tower section um and then let's see over here we're gonna have a couple tanks set up right there and then um on top of these we're actually gonna have our steam turbines so um these are very, very big and we may eventually add additional ones right now i'm gonna do two but uh yeah <laughs> these are big enough to fit the solar, I mean, the, the steam turbines and have one extra block space because I do want one extra block space for the fluid pipe so that it kind of fits into this uh, structure, which we'll get into that um, whenever we set this up. We'll probably start getting into steam today. I think I'm going to start getting into steam before I set up the um, solar or the distillation towers, I do believe. I think I'm going to do it backwards from how the quest book has us doing it, but that's so that I can get power being generated up here before I start running dist uh, distillation towers. Because I think it'll be for the best, plus we need steam for distillation anyways. 
um, a little bit later on. And then right over here, I've actually got these open spaces on each side, and I've left them open for right now. But I may eventually, um, in this age, after we get the solar towers up and going. But since the solar towers only run during the day, you know, whenever they can see the sun, I may add um, boilers. Because these can run throughout the night, so I may have boilers set up so whenever the... You know, the steam tank gets below like 50% or something. The boilers kick on and make up for the loss in steam. Now, it's only going to be consuming steam when it needs power. So chances are, until we actually start stressing the power, um, I honestly don't think we're going to have any issues with steam. But I'll probably go ahead and set up steam boilers and set up some redstone control so that we have those. If the steam levels get low or something, those can kick on. And then up here, we're going to have just a power bank set up to handle all the power that we're generating. So this platform is going to handle a bit of our liquid distillation stuff, uh, mainly the towers, which actually handles what uh, oil comes in, three liquids come out, diesel goes in, two more liquids come out, so five liquids coming out of those towers. So quite a bit of liquid um, production that's going to be going on, plus we're going to have distilled water and steam being produced up here as well. So um, altogether seven liquids and then a lot of power. A lot of power generation. So that's pretty much the idea of the setup. We'll be setting that up over the coming episodes, starting probably this episode, like I said. Okay, so anyways, today we're going to be finishing up our Better With Add-On stuff. Um, I want to get into tea today. Then I also want to go over the XE saplings just because we can, um, because I want to show you guys that. And then honestly, I think for right now, I think our Better With Add-On stuff will be handled. Now, like I said, I still have to set up this area. I just didn't get around to it just due to running out of time messing with that because it took a while to figure out exactly where everything was going to go and how many of everything and all that stuff so um also i did a bit of planning for upcoming pneumatocraft stuff kind of where i'm going to put that in and some little things like that but so anyways anyways if we take a look at the advancements there's actually two advancements here the windmill and the redstone engine i want to go ahead and knock these out and i don't have any current plans for these um, you know, I, I feel like this is obsolete. We have blood magic conduits. So if anything, I mean, blood magic conduits and immersive engineering for power transfer, there's not a whole lot of point in the build craft pipes. I don't feel like, cause they're just slow. Um, and it's a lot of wiring. My base is too big for wiring when I have blood magic <laughs> nodes that can wirelessly transfer things clear across the base, you know? So we're going to go ahead and make the redstone engine to get the advancement, but I don't have any need for it. Um, if you're curious how that works, we're using them extensively in Exoria, so, um, but they're pretty straightforward. Um, the windmill, I'm going to end up using this for decorative purposes, but I actually don't have any need for it yet either as far as power generation. Because it actually generates, um, you know, it's about on par with like water wheels, but we went with water wheels, set those up because they fit inside of our base. And now I have super power and I'm about to have super, super power. So I really don't have any need for the windmill. I'm going to end up setting it up in the farm area, but I've got to build the base for it, which really won't take too long uh, once I've sat down to do that. Oh, by the way, if you look at my chat log here, you can see it says, you cannot form this multi-block. Further progression is required. The, uh, not that, the simple machines right here, the assembler, you cannot form this multi-block. I was trying to set one of these up and we were going to do something with it this episode just for like an easy automated treated wood system because I've got creosote and I've got wood and so I figured well we'll just go ahead and automate treated wood this episode so that we had that going on um, but it's not allowed till the next age I guess which really I think in the next age we get other ways to automate items. There's some there's some I will say there's some strange choices on age stuff within this pack to me that doesn't really make any sense like that's another thing. Why that's disabled in the industrial age, because it feels like that would go <laughs> hand in hand with industrialization, but I guess it doesn't. So anyways, we cannot form that multi-block, so I had to scratch that idea, um, but that's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Um, tree of wood, I can whip up a stack of it, you know, in a couple seconds, so. But anyways, I went ahead and prepped everything for our redstone engine, so we can just go ahead and knock that out. Um, there we go. Upgrade your line advancements. And that is done. I just want to kind of tidy up before we get started with any actual projects. And then we are also going to need to make a windmill. And these things, um, we're going to need to make eight windmill blades, which is treated wood and treated sticks. 
And we'll get our windmill. Bum bum. And there we go. Advancement made windmill. Woot. <laughs> Just cleaning house. And this works identical to the water wheel. That's why I'm not going to worry too much about showing it off. Um, because it's it's identical. Basically, you put down a kinetic dynamo. You stick it on said kinetic dynamo. I'm going to put it right here. I don't have a kinetic dynamo, but it doesn't really matter. And there you go. That's what you got. And this thing can be upgraded. Um, let me pull this off real quick. Uh, you can make this right here, the windmill sails. So this requires, uh, you can do hemp cloth or tough tough fabric. And actually, I think hemp cloth would be, uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's really about the same, but you use, uh, instead of using a stick, you just use hemp cloth. So I'm going to make one of these just so I can show it to you in case you're not familiar with it. Used to, you actually made a windmill called the Improved Windmill. Now you actually just make um, this windmill and upgrade it. Um, by the way, I did get the crops automated. You can see we have 128 stacks of all these things. And, um, oh, I tried to automate the honeycombs, but it, the nodes from Blood Magic will not automatically pull out the honeycombs. So I'm just having to manually, I just manually grab them at the moment. But it's not like I have any really pressing need for uh, lots of honeycombs or anything at the moment. All right, so if we take the windmill and we place it down... Like right there, let's say. And is it going to start spinning up? I don't know. Yeah, okay. I didn't know if that tree was too close or not. Um, but if we take the windmill cells and we just right click it, you can see it adds those to our windmill. And it will actually increase the speed. And you can put up to eight of them on there. And it will increase the speed. And you basically, the faster it goes, of course, the more RF you generate. So a fully upgraded windmill actually turns out to be pretty decent. Um, and I think it, yeah, it saves its uh, upgrades whenever you break it off. So this one has three upgrades on it. And I believe you can actually pull these off if you, oh, you can't. Okay. I was thinking that you could. I was thinking shift right click, but nope. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just dump those off because like I said, I don't actually have any uh, pressing plans for those at the moment, but. We'll end up setting up a windmill, but I doubt, I honestly doubt we're going to do anything with Redstone Engine. Maybe if it had been like age two or something, which really wouldn't have made sense. It needs to be age three, but uh, I just don't have any need for it. Also, just a really, really quick housekeeping thing I've been meaning to address the last few episodes. Um, in the most recent patch, there was a recipe added for the Crystal Cluster. Um, and I actually quite like this recipe. I kind of wish this was added. <laughs> Um, I do, because decorative purposes, but anyways, but I do really like this recipe. Um, I think it was very well done and very well executed because it requires all five wheel types, um, which of course for us, it's not a problem. We've got all five wheel types. That's not an issue in the least, uh, but it does require that extra, you know, step to get all the different wheel. And then it also requires an awakened activation crystal. Um, which is just basically extra nether star and then two ethereal slates which is max level uh, slates and then bloodstone brick so it, i feel like it kind of covers a lot of the bases of blood magic and stuff that i think um, otherwise would be skipped like the wheel so i do quite like this recipe and i do i just wanted to address it because i do have plans to add these in i just haven't yet so um, but we will that way we can upgrade to a tier six altar and have all those extra rune slots to use for our altars. Okay, so first up, let's go ahead and cover the Exe saplings. These are actually kind of neat. Um, all they require is just a soul urn and then any kind of sapling. You can do um, the six standard vanilla saplings as well as Sakura, Mulberry, and Elysio. Uh, let's do a Mulberry sapling. So we'll throw that together. And there we go, we have our Exe sapling. So if I take this and I set this down, like say right here, and we give this just a minute. Um, I'm not for sure if like Green Grove would work with this or not. Let's try it. All right, so Green Grove doesn't really seem to work on it, but the watering can does work. Um, you'll notice it does kind of stop working at a certain point. but it will continue to grow basically what it does is it just makes like a flat carpet of leaves of whatever tree that you're using and you can harvest these and there we go we got saplings and sticks 
And this will grow back even if you break the leaf that's on top of it. So if I water this, there we go. Like, it grows, like, super fast with the watering can. Um, it will, even without the watering can, it does grow decently fast. So if you want to get, like, a bunch of saplings, I mean, you could automate this and, you know, have it collected or whatever. And I want to say that maybe with Silk Touch you can probably gather that, I think. But don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. But it does grow out in the straight line. Um, and it grows a fairly large range if you give it time. Uh, so if you want to fill a room up with leaves, <laughs> that's your go-to. If you want to have leaves for, say, a leaf-eating generator from Batania, of course, that's not in this pack. But if you want to have a leaf-eating generator, XC saplings work perfectly for that. One thing that is in the pack is industrial foregoing. So we could gather the leaves with that, um, with the harvester. Um, you know, you could automate different things. You could use it for different things. So if you need a lot of leaf blocks, you don't necessarily need trees. There you go. Um, honestly, the first thing that comes to mind for me is it would make mana production so easy with, uh, uh, munch dew. Anyway, just something fun I wanted to show you guys if you have a need for a lot of leaves. There you go. Okay, now the last thing I want to cover with better with add-ons before we move on back into immersive engineering and liquid processing is I want to cover the tea system. Um, you know, I mentioned I wanted to cover this. Now, right now, these are not craftable. By default, you throw any kind of seed into the Ancestral Infuser, and you're going to get back tea seeds in addition to the rush and the rice. But, you know, we made a bunch of these. We never got any tea seeds. Um, they're not obtainable within this pack right now. So, just a heads up, I did have to cheat these in. But I want to go ahead and cover this because it's, it's something different and unique. Um, but you can plant these like anything else. Just drop your tea seeds down. I'm going to go ahead and plant a few of these. So the tea seeds are going to start growing. And depending on the conditions, you're going to get different types of tea. If you look at the tea um, here in JEI, you have a multitude of different teas. You only have one tea seed. But you have nine different types of tea that can be made. Now, seven of those nine types just grow in the old world. Basically, whenever you plant tea, it has, it starts out as a white tea leaf. Like, for example, if I go ahead and I bone mill this. And I know it was brought up in the comments a few times about the Sigil of the Green Grove being able to be used as bone meal. So, I forgot about that. We're just going to use that. Now, uh, you can see it's 85% grown. There we go, mature. Every tea grown in the overworld is going to start as a white tea leaf. And you can see these tea seeds duplicate like crazy fast. Um, that's why I just cheated in 64 because you can make you can make a stack of tea leaves in no time because you generally get like two three four tea leaves back every time you break a bit of tea so we got white tea leaves all your tea is going to start out as a white tea leaf but then it's going to turn into one of the other six colors um, being this one this one this one this one pretty much everything here except for nether tea and in tea nether tea and in tea they have to be grown in the respective dimensions you know you have to grow it in the end or in the nether uh, to get those tea leaves so that's where those two come from but anyways if you grow this up and you let it get to a white tea leaf and what we're going to do is we're going to leave them as white tea for a little while this is where auto harvesting may not be the best thing unless you just have it like you know maybe harvest like once a day or something you know have it on a timer system because it will try to harvest these when they hit mature, but you actually want to let them set and stay mature for a little while. And if you give them enough time, they will generally change colors. And let me turn on Sigil of the Green Grove. You could say it kicks through pretty quick. Um, now all of these ten, they look to be mainly these two colors. Um, yeah, I'm not getting, I don't think I'm getting uh, a lot of the colors right now. Um, it all depends on your... Well, it depends on a few factors. Let's go ahead and harvest these, though. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about getting the other ones. Basically, if you set up your farm in different places and in different situations, you're going to get different types of tea. Like, yeah, look at that, 41 seeds. Um, different types of tea will take precedence, more or less. Um, but basically, the way that you... What affects the tea is a combination of your dimension, which, of course, we're doing in the overworld. Uh, but like I said, end and nether produce end and nether type teas. Also, your biome has an effect, the Y level has an effect, and the light level um, has an effect, as well as whether or not the, the seed can actually see the sky or not. 
Um, and actually, uh, I'm quoting this, of course, from the actual uh, like wiki for the mod. Because I did double check, because I wasn't exactly sure. You know, I haven't extensively done tea uh, in the past. But the best quality tea that you can grow, like the best situation for your tea to grow, is in the overworld. It has to be covered from the sky, so it can't see the sky. You have to have good light, so make sure the room's lit up. Um, it needs to be in a plains, extreme hills, or swamp biome. And you need to have it at like a medium height. So uh, 76, I don't know if that classifies as medium, maybe like 100s or something. But it needs to be about a medium height. And that's going to that's gonna yield you the best tea, which basically means that you're going to have all the different variations. Uh, you're going to be getting more tea in. I mean, there's not different qualities here, um, but you're going to get a better spread. So you're going to have, you know, the Assam tea and uh, Kalon tea and everything coming in. So you'll have access to all the six types plus the white leaf um, within a single farm it's going to kind of spread out i actually set up in my test world i set up like more ideal conditions and i was getting a fair spread of those but anyways this is mainly just like a quick crash course if you know if you're interested in the tea brewing um, and hopefully it'll show up in more packs and everything i feel like it was a little bit late in this pack because i mean honestly we're at the point where i'm not even like drinking potions anymore but you know we had the between lands brewing and everything that came up and I know. I kind of wish it was a bit earlier, but... Anyways, now that we have the tea leaves, we can actually process these. Um, you can actually use them just as tea leaves, but we can also soak and wilt them. If you want to soak tea leaves, uh, basically there's different ones. Certain ones need to be soaked, certain ones need to be wilted. So just check JEI there. Um, but you can soak them in the cherrywood soaking unit, wilt them in the cherrywood drying unit that we covered last episode. And then you can turn them into tea which is through the netted screen. Now you don't have to do this. You can actually throw in your tea leaves directly into the nabe and make tea out of them. You can also take wilted or soaked leaves, throw them into the nabe and make tea. Or you can make the actual tea blends. And the more processed that the tea leaves are, the better tea that you're gonna make, like the stronger tea um, that's gonna be produced. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna process some of this and I'm gonna keep some of it unprocessed so we can kind of see the difference between the two. So I'll do some of each of these. I'll do like half of each of them. And I want to say these are mainly all soaked, right? Let's see, white tea leaves are wilted and the other two are soaked. Okay, now while we're waiting for that to run through, uh, to the, for those to get soaked and wilted and everything, let's go ahead and take a look at the teacup. We can make this in the Tatara uh, that we covered last episode. Just throw clay in there and it makes teacups. So I want to make, I want to go ahead and make a few teacups. Okay, so our tea is done. We got soaked leaves and we got wilted leaves. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take it and I'm going to dump it through this netted screen here. Uh, if you take a look, that's how you get our your tea blend. So we'll go ahead and just toss that in and... Oh yeah, it goes underneath it, doesn't it? There we go. And then we'll toss this one in, we'll toss that one in. And there we go. Oh, wait, it all turned into, uh... Okay, that's a bug. <laughs> if you have, uh, Bancha tea, and then you throw in Sincha tea, it all turns into Sincha. Okay, well, we got a lot of that, I guess. <laughs> it's not a big deal, because I'm just showing you basically the, the way the system works and everything, uh, more than anything right now. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we need to set up our nabe. And this does require a heat source. Let me pop over and get my flint and steel real quick. And I'll actually show you right here um, how this system works. I'm going to put down the nether rack right there, and then I'm going to light it on fire. Because we do want that heat available. And then what I'm going to do is let me actually close that off. And let me put, uh, let me go get some dirt just to make this a little bit easier. Um, I do plan on setting up a nabe. I mean, I don't know how extensively I'm actually going to use it, but I would like to have it in our Better With Add-ons area uh, once I get all that set up. So I'm going to come up with like a different little design, basically, for this. But we're going to put the nabe down right above that flame. And then we're going to put just some blocks down. And that's basically because we're going to have water flowing, and I want to be able to stop that water flow. Okay, so we'll have something like this for right now. 
Um, and the way this works is if we put down water and we have it flowing over the nabe, um, and then we stop the water flow, you can see that the nabe actually has water in it now. Um, now it's, honestly, it's better either to shut off the fire or to keep the water flowing because if you throw items over the top of this, and actually I don't really need that right there, I can just have it flowing to this point. If you have the fire active and you have the nabe filled, but you don't have water flowing over it, um, whenever you add ingredients, once you hit three ingredients, it's just going to start boiling. But anyways, these nabe, they can hold six ingredients. But they can basically make a tea from anything between three and six ingredients. And when you're making a tea, you need to do a primary tea blend, for starters. And so your tea is going to have to have at least two of the same tea item and the same process level. So, for example, cincha tea, I couldn't use, like, one cincha tea leaf and one cincha tea. Because it's not the same process level. It's the same tea, but it's not the same process level. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to dump in two cincha... Oh, whoops, I got the uh, magnet turned on at the moment. We'll go ahead and throw in two of these and one of that. And then if we stop the water in this... It should start boiling. There we go. You can see whenever it smokes really heavily like that, it means it's boiling. So like I said, it can it can accept anything from three to six ingredients. So we'll make a tea out of that, and then we'll do um, a tea with, say, sugar and milk, for example. And then we'll also make one with, like, these tea leaves. Wait, how did I get a psalm? That should have been white tea leaves, but I got a psalm tea. I feel like it's kind of a little bit bugged right now because I'm getting like random teas instead of the teas that I'm actually doing because I don't have a psalm tea. I have white tea. So I don't know. But anyways, we'll, we'll roll with it. It's still a really neat system and it's like a unique brewing system, you know, kind of like the between land stuff. Okay, so whenever it turns colors, the water has turned this like green tea color. And then what we can do is we can take our teacups and we can just right click this. And we gather up the tea. Um, so we made a cup of strong, bitter, dry sencha tea. Okay. And basically the strong is, it's saying that uh, the sencha in this, it's highly processed, right? So it's, you know, it's going to be a strong effect on it. Um, the bitter comes from if it has sugar or not. We don't have any sugar in this, so it's bitter. Dry means there's no milk. And if you add those, it's going to apply different effects. But you can see what this one does is it gives you mining fatigue for a minute and 30 seconds, but it gives you speed for three minutes. And when applied, you're going to get a negative 10% to your attack speed, plus 20% to speed. There's actually a few helpings of this. Like if I was to grab this out, you can see I got three cups from one craft of this. So like the between land stuff, not quite on the same level as the between land stuff, because that stuff, I mean, you, you do it like, uh, one craft and you have like potions forever <laughs> but um, it does make quite a few servings of the tea but this time let's for example let's throw in um, two of the sencha and then a white leaf okay so our tea is done let's go ahead and grab a cup of that and we'll compare it uh, this is moderate it's a moderate bitter dry sencha tea so you can see now we only have 30 seconds of speed a minute of mining fatigue so it's not nearly as good as the strong version. When it's highly processed, the negative effects kind of take precedence over the, uh, the positive effect in that case. So it's really not a very good tea in that case. Um, it is ideal that you process it um, as much as you possibly can. Now, let's one more comparison I want to make is let's do a cup of tea with six ingredients. Right now we've only been using three ingredients. So let's do one that has uh, two sencha, asam, and then we're going to do, um, let's see, a serving of milk and two servings of sugar. Let's do that. That's six ingredients. That's going to be the max that we can put into this. And you do just throw the milk in by bucket. Okay, so our tea is done. You can see we got our bucket back. Let's go ahead and grab that. And then let's go ahead and pull this stuff out and you can see it actually made a little bit more since we use more ingredients it does make more tea 
So in this case, we have a cup of strong, sweet sencha tea. We have three cups of this. This is when we get into the really good teas. Because since we use milk and sugar milk, um, I want to say that milk removes the negative effects, or can remove the negative effects, and the sugar increases the effect strength. So we have cups that give us three minutes of speed too. Okay, so that's a major improvement over, um, it's a huge improvement over this one here that has speed of 30 seconds and mining fatigue for a minute. But it's also a pretty decent upgrade over this one with a three minutes and minute and 30 seconds negative effect. So, I mean, it's speed two and it's just the positive. Um, let me go ahead and just drink these to get rid of these because I would actually wouldn't mind having uh, maybe... How many servings did we get? I think it's five, right? Or is it six? Let me, let me pop another one of these. Yeah, we got six servings of this tea. Um, and look at that, like, speed increase. Like, I could get around pretty quickly using this. Like, fast enough that it lags up. <laughs> so, speed two plus my dog pelt boots is like some mega movement speed going on. So, I mean, there's there's actually some really nice effects that you can come out of here with. And I will say that probably the best tea is matcha, uh, which is actually, it's there's not a matcha leaf. You actually take tincha tea and you process it again through the netted screen. So you just throw it right back in there, and that's how you get matcha. And matcha actually has three positive effects. If I recall, I played around with some of these in my test world, kind of as a refresher on this, but... Um, matcha, I think, was the one that gives you saturation, absorption, and something else. There's like three positive effects on it. So if you combine that with the milk, you get the negative effects off of it. And then you, you know, you toss in like some sugar to boost the effect and everything. You can actually come out with some pretty nice tea. So kind of just a crash course on the potion brewing. Um, like I said, I mean, it's better than vanilla brewing. Um, you can actually get some better effects and some better combinations on the tea. And, I mean, if you're willing to put in the effort. Um, I'm not going to go over all the combinations and what every single potion does and everything like that. Um, you know, if you if you want to get into this brewing, you can pop in your test world and you can make and test around with it, which I would suggest doing. But just remember, you can have up to six ingredients. You can, you know, add milk to get rid of some negative effects. You can add in sugar to make it sweeter. And boost the effect strength of it um, up to a certain point so it's kind of something that you'll want to play around with it's kind of open-ended um, brewing system kind of like the between lands brewing system which i like instead of it saying you know if you look at i hate vanilla minecraft's brewing system like to the point i barely ever even use it because i just can't stand it but like you throw in a gas tier you're going to get a uh, gas tier with three aqua potions you're going to get this potion you know it doesn't quite work like that which i quite love it's a little bit more open-ended, it's a little bit more free-form for you to play with. And then one last thing I want to note real quick, I'm not going to do it because I haven't made, you know, I haven't got into the bow um, and making the yaw arrows. These right here, we talked about these last episode. Um, but if you get into the bows and making the yaw arrows and want to get serious about that, you can actually make a poison using the nabe. And what it is, if you throw in netherwart, gunpowder, redstone dust, glowstone dust, Spider's Eye and Common Rush, uh, this right here, you can actually make a poison that then you can dip your arrows in and poison the tips of them. And so every time you shoot an enemy with it, it has a chance to add poison damage uh, to that arrow. So once again, it is uh, Netherwart, Gunpowder, Redstone Dust, Glowstone Dust, Spider's Eye, and Common Rush. Just a heads up on that. But if you guys have any questions about the potion system, um, I know it was kind of a crash course, but, I, you know, like I said, it's pretty freeform, and I'm not going to cover every possible combination of potion ingredients and stuff like that. But just a heads up, I mean, the strongest, the overall strongest uh, tea is matcha tea. So um, that one has three positive effects and actually is a pretty good tea. Because having saturation on a tea is just, it's great. And plus, you toss in absorption. Um, I know in my test world, I had like absorption for like nine minutes. Of course, after it wears off, you know, it's gone and the buff goes away. But there's like nine minutes that I could absorb like a couple hearts of damage. So, and then it was like saturation for, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds or something. I mean, it's a pretty decent uh, tea.
in truth. <laughs> it's pretty nice. But if you guys have any questions, you know, let me know down in the comments, and I'll try to get those answered for you. But it's really something that's kind of more open, free form. Like, what do you want to do with it? Kind of like the Between Lands Brewing um, was as well. You know, I just kind of like going over and covering some of those like lesser used or often overlooked type little features like that, and especially brewing systems that are like unique. There's also the rustic brewing system. I haven't gone over that. The condenser, the retort. Uh, it's basically vanilla brewing, just with like a few more slots to put things. Um, <laughs> is really all it is. It's why I haven't gone over yet, because you throw in a little bit of water, you throw in a glass bottle, you throw in your ingredients, and you get a potion. It's not terribly exciting. I like the more unique brewing systems. I really like the Between Lands brewing and the tea brewing and the wine making and stuff. The, uh, I don't know, the Rustics alchemy system isn't crazy exciting, really. So that's why we haven't covered that one, but. Anyways, I went ahead and cut for a little while, and I did prep up uh, some stuff. Prepped up a few a few things here. And this is what we need to start working on our steam production, our solar-based side of our steam production. So if we take a look inside of our engineer's manual, and let's go ahead and get our distillation tower projector, or our tower project, or our projector, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I want to make this thing right here the solar tower and I actually want to make three of these if you recall I said I want one there one over there and one over there and I did prep up the stuff that we need to make three full-sized towers so let's go ahead and get our projector set and let's do this let's make this beast okay so the actual front of this I guess it really doesn't matter because it's about the same I do want the redstone connection facing us because there's no piping that comes out um, right there. So let's rotate this guy around to right there. And, it, and we're going to put it on this cobblestone slot right there. That's what I've got the cobblestone down for. And let's go ahead and build out these. And I'm going to build out three of these guys. I'll build out this first one I'm kind of on camera and then I'll, I'll cut and do the other ones. Uh, these things are semi-expensive. They did require a lot of steel as you can tell in my inventory. Quite a bit of steel. Uh, going into this. That is heavy engineering. Redstone engineering. And then we've got steel sheet metal. There. 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 And then again. This thing has uh, a lot of pieces to it. <laughs> Let's bring that up. I think this is the center of it. And these things are pretty tall. As you can tell. Now these don't have to see the sun, but the parts that attach to them, which we're going to get into that in just a second, the, uh, the reflectors, they do have to see the sun. They have to see the sky in order to work. Oops, I don't want that there. Thanks a bunch. Let's put that there. And we'll build off of it. And there we go. And then this should be, I think, the final level, right? And I believe it's all steel scaffolding. And we'll just put all this stuff down. There we go. It is formed. See, it's pretty big. It's fairly large. And you can see it actually all fits right underneath this little border. That's on purpose. There was, there was actually a lot of planning. Um, because I don't want to get this thing built. And then, like, oh, I need to fix this and change this. And have to re like tear it down and rebuild it. The worst thing about building this castle is these things, they take a while to break. Of course, I can use vein miner, but I've got—I don't want to break everything, you know. All right, let's take our engineer's hammer and let's activate this. There we go, our very first solar tower. And you'll notice it has like these diamond-shaped slots. These are for the reflectors. Like I said, the reflectors do have to see the sun. So, um, but we'll get into the reflectors in just a minute. Give me a second because I'm going to build out two more of these monstrosities. Okay, our three solar towers are done. Starting to, starting to come together. It's going to take a little bit. Um, we're definitely not going to get it all done this episode. We we'll probably get steam started, which later on we're going to use water for right now, and then we'll change it over to distilled water uh, probably next episode. But I'm going to go ahead and go straight for steam. Then we can change it over later at our leisure. Um, okay, so now that those are in place, the next thing that we need to do is um, we actually need to set up the reflectors. Because basically the way this works is it takes the power of the sun and it distills the water and turns it into steam. You know, it heats it up. 
And to do that, it's going to have to have some way of transferring the, the heat from the sun into the solar tower. So for that, we need these right here, these solar reflectors. And you can have up to four of them per per solar tower. And if you right click, you can open this up and you can see there's a little GUI here. This is where water or distilled water comes in. This is where steam comes out. And then, of course, you have uh, input steam, output steam, input water, output water with like buckets or whatever, you know, you want to use. Now, this right here, this actually shows you um, if you have connected reflectors, it's going to light up and show you that a reflector is connected up. Um, so right now we don't have any reflectors plugged up, set up, uh, so there's nothing, nothing displayed right here. But the more reflectors you have, the faster it's going to work because it's got more heat coming into it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... I, I went ahead and made the treated fences. I'm going to have to go make the rest of this. But I want to go ahead and lay these out where they're going to go. And if you look in here, it actually mentions that you can have these from 1 to... 1 to 10 blocks. Okay. So I'm actually going to have mine right up near it. I'm going to have one block between them, one airspace. And we'll go ahead and just lay these out. So each of these towers is basically going to be, going to be five multi-blocks that make up each little tower segment. And these do need to be lined up with that little diamond. If you look in here, um, you can actually see it's got like a little diamond shape. And that's where the sun is going to come in to it. So you need to have the top of these open to the sky. And then this has to be lined up perfectly with that. One to ten blocks away, but it has to line up. So, just keep that in mind. Okay, so those, the treated wood's in place. Now, we also need two light engineering blocks each. Uh, of course, I'm making twelve of these things. Uh, four steel scaffolding each, and a block of silver for each. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so let me go get this stuff together, and I'll be back here in just a minute. Okay, I got everything together that we need to finish out our reflectors. And so I'm going to build this like bit by bit. So the first layer here is steel scaffolding, a light engineering block, and then another steel scaffolding. And then above that is treated wood, silver block, treated wood. It takes a while to build all this out. <laughs> when you have this many multi-blocks going into this. Oh, and there's still so many multi-blocks. Like in the grand scheme of things, there's still so much that needs to go in this area. Especially if I do like the biodiesel boilers, like there's a lot that needs to go in here. Okay, there's all of that. And then the final layer is just once again, light engineering block and steel scaffolding. And then we're going to run around with the hammer really fast and like create all of these. Luckily in this pack, there's really nothing that I can think of that I would consider ex really like legitimately expensive because I mean we have pretty much endless resources at this point of like whatever we want <laughs> to have so I mean especially like like steel and iron and all that stuff like I can make uh, six stacks of steel in a heartbeat you know okay so there's all of that and one other multi-block I want to go ahead and just set this up because I'm gonna want one I'm gonna make a tank the first tank that's going to go over here, basically. So we're going to have it setting... Um, yeah, we'll put it right here. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. So I'll just bust one of these out. I've been making... I've made so many tanks in this uh, series. Like, I don't even have to look it up. It's just... It's easy. I've got this thing memorized. Okay, so now we're ready to go. We're ready to make uh, 13 multi-blocks. <laughs> Let's do this. So there's our tank, and then all we need to do is come around, and um, I think it's, is it the silver block? Yes. Okay. And side doesn't matter because it's identical on both sides. Technically, you can have, like, another solar tower, like right here, and I think, I want to say that it will reflect to both of them, um, if I recall. I've played around with it in my test world, but it, that was forever ago. Um, I want to say that was uh, Modern Skyblocks 2 when I was testing to see if it would work with, uh, you know, two solar towers on one uh, reflector, and I want to say, yeah, it did. Okay, but anyways, now that those are formed, if we take a look here, 
There we go. It takes a second to update. You can see that all the yellow lights are now active. That means that this has um, is getting sunlight from all four solar uh, reflectors. As long as we don't cover this up, if I was to take and put, say, a block, um, if I put a block right here, there we go. You can see after it updates, it's removed that because this can no longer see the sky. It's this block right here. Um, it shows like a basically like a dynamo, a kinetic dynamo, but this thing doesn't actually like create any power, um, like RF power. Um, basically, that's just denoting that that's where it, it needs to see the sky. It needs to be able to collect that sunlight, reflect it back at the solar tower um, to heat this thing up. Now what we need to do is we need to start pumping water into this. Fun times. So let me, let's see, I should still have a water connection open. I was thinking I still had one open for this, right? I have this side right here. Perfect. Okay, so let me go make uh, some fluid filters. And then I'm going to need uh, fluid pipes, and I'm going to need input, output node. Okay, so let's get this thing set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our input routing node setting here. Uh, we're going to say that the, the south side fluid filter water bucket. And we'll go ahead and grab that node. And then I'm going to put the master node setting, say, right over here. There we go. And then we're going to grab our master node, and we'll just attach it over here. And this is where, this is the reason I set up that underbelly, because we're going to need it right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pump water into this, and you can do it from either of the blue sides. Output goes out the back here. Um, so we're going to do water here and I'll end up coming through and like cleaning this up with the uh, scaffolding so we'll do that and then on this one we're gonna do it right here and then on this one we'll do it right here okay and now I just need to connect all these pipes up because we're gonna have one input node just feeding all of these basically Okay, so there we go. It's all connected up. Now, this will, eventually, this is going to change to a distilled water line. Um, and then we'll just change out the node, basically, and change where the node connects to, because it's going to have um, fluid pipes that connect to all of the distilleries. But for right now, I just want to use just straight up water, um, because both of them work just fine. And water is going to help us to kind of jumpstart the system, and then we'll change over to distilled water once we have power being produced up on this platform. So we'll just put our output node setting right here. And this is on the east side. So we'll say that on the east side, you can output uh, fluid filter water. And then we'll just connect that up. And so hopefully, if we go take a look now, you can see that water is steadily coming into here. And it's steadily creating steam. Now, it's not terribly fast. It takes uh, 200 millibuckets to make 100 millibuckets of steam, of water. Because it's not quite as effective as distilled water. And this thing, I might actually need to, let's see, I might actually end up changing this up. Because I don't know that I'm going to be able to move enough water with the transfer node. <laughs> I feel like it's a tad bit slow, but it is spreading it across three solar towers, so I don't know. We might tweak this a little bit or increase the water production speed or water transfer speed uh, if it comes down to it. And I mean, I could always set up on-site water production with Buildcraft, and that would be all right. Um, also, the well bucket would work. But fact is, I mean, the stilled water is going to make it more efficient, so maybe... Maybe once we get that up and going, we'll see. We shall see. If, if I need to speed it up, I can always speed it up. It's not an issue. So anyways, we're now producing steam. Woot. Good stuff. Um, and it was brought up in the comments before that these wouldn't transfer steam correctly. I'm going to test it. Um, and we're going to see if we can transfer steam into this. And if not, I'll make some adjustments. But it was brought up that the node system couldn't handle steam properly. Okay, yeah, the node system is not going to work with it. 
Okay, well let me empty all the steam out of this real quick. And then I'm going to have to run fluid pipes from here over to here. Um, so we're not going to be able to use the transfer node system at all for the steam. Um, like I said, I knew it was brought up in the comments, but uh, or as mentioned, I think it was on the Discord actually. But there had been an update since then, so I just wanted to double check it. But Alright, so let me run fluid pipes over. Okay, I got the fluid pipes connected up to this first one. Um, I haven't got all the, the other two connected up, but it did pull all the steam out and it has dumped it into this tank. So if we take a look, we have 18,400 millibuckets of steam in here now. Um, now I need to get these emptied. Wow, 20,000 in that one. And over here we've got uh, 20,000. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to have to go make up some more fluid pipes, but luckily I've actually got a lot of iron plates crafted because I knew with the stuff coming up we're going to need a lot of pipes and we're also going to need a lot of iron sheet metal so I did prep up a fair few of these to say the least so give me just a second while I get these connected up with uh, fluid pipes okay all three of our solar towers are connected and we have 127,000 millibuckets uh, of steam in here at the moment so it's steadily building up. We can speed this up because right now it's waiting on water. Um, so we are going to end up speeding that up. And what I'm probably going to do is uh, the well bucket, I guess, is what I'm going to go with. Since uh, the node isn't transferring as fast as I would like it to. I mean, honestly, it would probably be fine if I didn't have three solar towers that was splitting water between. But since that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and make... Um, a couple of these well buckets. I'll probably end up making more between episodes until water is basically filled all the time. You know, during the day and stuff like that. So let me get a couple hemp ropes. And then what we'll do is, let's see, this is the water line right here. Um, okay, it splits off over there. Let's go ahead and set up some well buckets setting... Uh, we'll put the well buckets over here. So we'll do something like this uh, for right now. Yeah, that'll work. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put water in here. And you can see that these are going to start filling up. And it's about uh, a bucket. Each one's getting a bucket every... I, I tested it in my test world. And it's about every six seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, something like that. Okay, now I don't think that this is going to automatically pull from here. Yeah, it's not automatically pulling. Well, I could just get away with like four redstone engines, right? And have like an extraction pipe extracting from here, extracting from here, extracting from here and there. Okay, so I went ahead and crafted up um, some wooden extract pipes and some clay insert pipes. And I'm going to go ahead and apply pipe sealant to these. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a wooden fluid pipe setting... I'm going to put a wooden extract pipe here, a liquid one, and then we're going to put a insert pipe right there. And so it should just insert into the fluid pipe. And then we'll put down our redstone engine right there and a lever and just apply redstone to that. So it should start extracting, once it builds up a little bit of power, it should start extracting that water, pumping it up into the fluid pipe. And so it should speed up the rate of transfer. Um, I think it's nighttime right now, it is. But water is steadily going up now. Um, and I'm assuming that it's transferring between all three of these. It is. So let's pop over and let's sleep. It's probably still not going to be enough water. And it's kind of struggling right now. So I'm thinking maybe one more engine setup. Plus the, the nodes transferring water in. And that may be enough to keep all three solar towers running. I'll probably end up doing four redstone engines and four uh, pipes for each corner of this setup, all pumping water up into the fluid pipe. And I mean, I think that's gonna be more than enough water um, between that and the node pumping in to run all three solars plus possibly two boilers. So I think that'll be enough. That should be good. And chances are by next episode, we should have a tank filled with steam and everything will be backed up and everything. Um, and then next episode, we're gonna get the turbines up and going. We're going to get, after that, we'll probably get the power setup situated so that we have it pumping into a buffer. Then we'll get the distillers set up. 
um, and get all that changed over so that it's actually distilling the water, which makes it even more efficient. Even though I don't know that it's necessarily needed, but we might as well, just for the sake of it. And then after that's all done, then we'll get the distillation tower set up and start producing those, those uh, the liquid naphtha and the diesel. And then the other three liquids from that. And then we might start modularity next episode, but we will definitely have um, this, this, this all done. And then maybe, maybe start modularity, maybe not. Maybe the next episode will be modularity and then getting into H4, because we're just about there. I mean, honestly, the liquid processing part and the automation for the plastic is actually super easy. But we're, we're implementing steam power in with it, so. There's a few additional steps due to that. Plus, I'm going big, so, <laughs> of course, I'm going massive, so. Um, anyways, I know it's about wrapping up point for this episode, so I hope you guys join me for next episode. We will finish probably setting up this whole platform and get all this situated and all nice and running and uh, all that good stuff. We'll have steam power and lots of liquids coming in, a variety of liquids. So, Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions or anything, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to get those answered for you. Um, and hopefully I cover the T-System enough. You know, like I said, it, it's very freeform in a lot of ways. So depending on what you want your potions to do or what you want your teas to do, you know, you can kind of gauge it and change it um, based on that. Um, they don't quite come out as strong as the Betweenlands potions because the Betweenlands potions go past the vanilla caps and the tea kind of caps out at the vanilla caps on potions. But I will say the tea system is kind of between vanilla and between lands like it's pretty nice once you really get into it so um but if you guys have any questions regarding that or anything let me know down in the comments and uh i'll do my best to get those answered for you uh, and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope to see you guys next time we're getting into some really fun stuff and we're just about to hit age four which means we're going to be hitting pneumaticraft um among other things i'm really excited for pneumaticraft <laughs> i'm very very exciting excited for it so, and we can get a car ne in the next age. We can make a car, so that'll be fun. Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. Stay updated with when new videos come out, and I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.